and welcome back to the second part of this tutorial. I'm going to exit out. Click on exit and let's double click on the save data. So whenever we enter any data in there, we should be able to save it. So double click on save data. Right. So let's see. Let's try and increase the font size so that you guys can see what will be happening. Let's come right down here. Fonts should be somewhere. Uh, select this. That's the font 16. That should have been big enough. So let's make it 20. Okay. So, all right. Inside my save data, I've just double click on this button to get there. So the first, very first thing I want to do is before I continue is let's first of all declare some variable right underneath here. So those two variables are going to be right underneath uh, or inside the public patch class as well. So I'm going to call that checks there. So that's the name of that very variable. So let, in fact, let's give it a value checks is zero. So I'm going to be, I'm going to need that. The next one is I'm going to call this bitmap. This bitmap I will be using that for the printing or for the print function. There we go. I need those two variables. I'm going to need a function that will make life easy. But let's do this first. Double click on this. And the very first thing I want to do now, I'm going to use a try cache just in case if I run into any problem. There we go. And underneath here, I'm going to put a cache statement right there. And the cache statement is going to take in the following exception. I'm going to call it exception ex. Come right down, enter, curly braces. And in there, I'm going to be lazy. Let's copy this message box that I've already. Let's copy everything. There we go. Copy that and paste it right in here. That's going to output my message. Paste it right in here. And I'll just change this one to ex dot message. So the ex dot message that will be the inbuilt message from the system. And this one instead of yes or no, I'm gonna change that to okay. And let's change this to just information, giving the end user an information or error message. Yeah, error message dot error so that's good so that's my error message display and right here inside the try cache the system will first of all try to open so let's say use our connections dot open enter parenthesis and semicolon and I'm now going to say ol so that will be for the command the command that we that I'm going to be using to execute the whole project OL equals let's say CMD equals connect dot create command. There we go. Okay, we're gonna create a command that will lead to the connection. So we then say CMD dot command type. And that is going to be equals command type text dot text there now cmd command command text command text this very one that is where we go to enter our query. I want the system to insert into remember the name of your database that is very important if you can't remember you can always go straight to the connections that is the name of my database there is save data grab hold of that and come right down here and just paste it in here insert into e save data and what are we inserting in there? We inserting as follows: employee ID, comma, everything you have on your database, first name, comma, surname, 
comma, I think I have email, comma, then have address, comma, and finally I have mobile. All right, should be six. There we go. We have six of those in there. So the next thing is let's cover this up. Okay, and I am going to ask you to enter the following value. Let's say value. So we're going to say values equals as follows. So open up bracket. Now, in here, inside our very bracket, we're going to put single apostrophe and quote. All right. Then we then put a plus sign. So let's put double plus sign. And we then close that very space mark with an apostrophe in there. So right in here, I'm going to put the name of my, of this very one. This one is called, yeah, TXT. Grab hold of that. I just paste it right in there, in between the plus sign, dot text. There we go. So that is the very first one taken care of. So the next one, the next one is going to be for the first name. Look, I might as well just copy this, copy all of this, and right in here I'm going to put a comma. Then I'm going to paste. Okay, copy this again. And paste this one right there as well. So this copied one that is going to be first name. Very good. Then this one is going to be so name. That's good. I'll come right here. The next one is I'm going to paste that one here. That is going to be I think that is uh, what did I call it? Email. So email. Very good. Very good. Now the next one, let's paste this one in here. That is going to be address. Now the last one that is mobile. There. Okay, all done. Before I run the thing and run it all up, I'm gonna come in here. I'll just press enter so that we go to the next line. Then you guys will be able to see it all properly. So in here, just press enter. Very good. Now you can see it all. Then I'm gonna get rid of this excess speech mark here. This will one get rid of that. And right here, just enter semicolon. There, you see that the error is all gone. I presume you guys can see it all. Yeah, you can. That's good. So those are my seven, no, six, six objects. Now, the next thing we now want to do after that is we need to now get the command that says cmd dot. That will be execute none query. Let's see. I say E. Execute non query. Enter semicolon. And after that, you can close the system or you can also enter a message. So let me enter a message there. Then I'll just close it. I can copy this message anyway. Copy that. Paste it right underneath here. And I'm just going to enter my message that. Uh, record saved that's my message done instead of error message let's call that information dot information that is it that's good now underneath here let's close the whole lot let's close the connection you now come in here and just say connection closed connect dot close there yeah. that is good so let's do one thing now 
let's run it and see if it's going to work I'm going to save that but before I run it let me just show you guys the save lines of code one more time let's have a good look at it okay so let's run it now remember the code starts from try try cache all the way down here all right click on run let's see we're waiting for the system to respond there we go so far no error but decision time employee id employee name i'm gonna call let's say john no let's say paul Paul. So we call that Paul Ajay. Paul Ajay is a newborn baby. And welcome to the new world. Alright, let's give it a, his own email. Yeah. Let's say at Gmail. There we go. An address. I don't know where it leaves. I said little Venice. There we go. Mobile number. There. Now it's decision time. Let's click on save. We do have an error. So let's see why. So it's telling me numbers, uh, number of query values and destination field and are, are not the same. So let's click on OK. I'm going to close that and let's look in here. Okay, I think I spotted the error. That is it right there. I have I was meant to enter a semicolon, but instead I have a full stop in there. So change that to semicolon. That's it. So I'm going to save that and run it again. Click on run. It's coming up now. There we go, guys. Now let's enter employee de details, and the name is going to be the little man Paul. And then enter his uh, surname and email. At gmail dot com. An address. Let's say seventeen. Little Venice. And move our number. There. So decision time. Let's click on save. There we go. The system is now successful. Look at that. That's brilliant. There. Okay, I'm going to have a look at the database itself. This is the database. Double click on it. So if it's officially saved, we should be able to see the details of the little man Ajay right there, Paul Ajay. So double click on that. There we go. That's Paul Ajay's details on the system. So close that. And another way out for you guys to view the data, you can also view it right in here. Go to the server and double click on no just drop it down go to the table right click on the table database and select retrieve data and there that is it okay that is fine now let's go back to design view and double click on updates we need to take care of that as well with the update I'm just gonna copy everything I have inside the the save come right down here and grab it all yeah copy that scroll right down and just paste that in here there and now we update we're going to have to change this to update and we will then delete the following let's let's get rid of this and we just change that to that is the name and here we just ask it to set I'm gonna get rid of everything that I have in here and just change that to employee ID 
So get rid of that and say set employee ID as follows and get rid of all of this. Just put equals in there. There. So I'm going to update it using my employee ID. So let's bring that in here and get rid of the value. We don't need that. There. Employee ID. We say okay, employee ID equals this. Where let's say where the yeah come in here and just type in where the first name where the first name equals whatever the first name is there should be an equals here and that is the first name right there and here I'm going to include let's say and we then want the surname as well right put equals in there and that's for the surname so I think that we do so I'm just gonna delete the rest so come right in here get rid of every other commands in there and come in here surname get rid of this as well yeah get rid of that and pass a column in there and get rid of this I think that is correct for the yeah I think so okay uh, so far I can't see any error so let's just come right here and uh, I'm gonna change the message in here instead of record save I'm just gonna see record updated there we go then make sure you have your command daughter execute non query as well all right okay let's see let's just save that and I'm going to run it I want to see what's going to happen with this update uh, I think I should do one thing I want to see the update in action so I'm going to close that let's select this data review and I will go straight to the properties let's change the event to cell click so that I can see the data in there so I'm going to change that to let's double click on that there we go inside cell click there I'm going to say txt employee dot text and that will be equals data review one dot select selected role and the selected role is inside an array of zero dot cells starting with zero dot value and the value dot to string there I've just added my very first one onto the data review so Oh, from the data grid view I can view whatever I have on the database I mean so let's come in here this will be first name we have surname then we have the address no email we have address underneath here Then we have mobile phone. Mobile is called. And we then need to change all of these. So this will be zero. I really start from zero. Then we have one, two, three, four, and five. There we go. That is it done. So let's do one thing. I'm going to just use try cache again. Grab hold of all of this. I'm going to type in try up here. Try. Get rid of that. I just paste that underneath here. I've already copied it. Now, we still won't be able to see this. So, what I'm going to do is for us to be able to see the data inside the database, I'm going to first of all just create, create a function. Let's double click on the form I'm going to create that function right underneath this initialize here 
So that very function I'm just going to end up call it void because it's not going to return taking any value. So void viewer. There we go. Now and underneath and underneath that I'm going to enter my try cache as well. Okay, we only need one, not double. So in here, let's do one thing. I'm going to copy the commands used for the form load or for the save. This other one, I'm going to copy all of these from here up to the text command text here. Let's copy that and go back in here and just paste that in here. That will open up the database for me and this command will take care of the rest. So I'm going to now ask the system here, I'm going to ask it to select. Select all from my database is called e save data. Yeah, I believe that's the name. Let's check that name out. E save data. Yep. Right. E save data. Okay, then we end up with semicolon here, and we now want to also get it. Uh, let's say command dot execute none query, and after that, I'm going to use this table. I'm going to call it dot dt, and that will be equals new data table. Now, that very data table that will be used to open up my data gravy. But first thing first, let's say um, OLEDB adapter, data adapter that I'm going to call that DP equals new OLDB data adapter and that takes in the commands now dp dot fill and that will be dt the data table enter semicolon now data review dot data source that will be equals d t let's close the connection dot close the connection close all right now since there's no error to check if that function work this very function i'm going to call it with my form load let's come right in here or we can even call it inside public from one initialize. So let's let's call it right in here. There. Instead of using form load. Okay, you can call it right here. So now let's save that. I'm gonna run it now. Let's see. There we go. That's good, it's working. So I'm gonna click on here, you see that? Now decision time to now try out the update I'm going to change this ID to let's say 007 and click on update there we go guys the update it is working if I click on ok I should be able to see the update here it takes effect immediately let's see that no it's not taking any effect so I'm going to exit out and run it one more time then let's see it should have taken effect now look at that okay look at that it's now 007 at the end okay all right that's good i think i'm going to have to in increase this one one way or the other okay that's good the update is working so let's take care of deletes and view then search and we can call it the end of the program so let's come in here first double click on that so right here inside the delete, I'm, I might as well just copy, I'm going to copy everything that I have in here as well, copy that, all the lines of code inside the 
update and bring it down paste it inside the delete button here now what do we want to do first of all let's change it to record deleted there and in here we need to change that to delete command so come right in here change that to delete and that will be all delete all from delete star from my database yep okay the database let's grab the database and just enter that in here e I think he saved data something like that that's the name okay we are where the ID equals as follows so I'm going to be using the ID as a reference so let's grab get hold or delete all every other thing that we have in here so let's select it all up to here and delete wait a minute I'm going to need this delete that okay so let's see now okay once it's deleted let's close here there and I will then also let's clear this system here I'm going to clear everything that I have in here once it's deleted to come in here underneath here just paste that here there right okay so that should take care of my deletes so press enter here so that you guys can see the whole lines of codes now undo that and uh, press enter somewhere else delete ID no we don't need the first name get rid of that we're only using the ID to delete it that's the problem sometimes when you copy this there we go let's get rid of all of that yeah okay you guys can now see this is just a message box okay you can now see the lines of codes that takes care of the delete if you're wondering why do we still have this two one in here that's to do with the variable up there that has not been used yet these two variables okay so the delete is taken care of now let me run the program and we delete anything let's see we add some data and we try and delete that so enter something else and the name let's say is Sally Gambido come right down here email is Sally at gmail address number one let's say how road all way mobile number there add Sally's details yeah now it's not going in here straight away just yet so I'm gonna exit out and reopen it now open we should be able to see that there we go that's all his details in there if we select that now let's click on delete we have an error so let's check that out okay make sure it's uh, exit and that it has his name is spelled correctly okay I must have made a mistake with something there so let's come back in the delete here check I think I found the error that is it the spelling of my database is wrong I better check the name of that database instead of making another mistake so that is it right here copy that 
and just paste it there. That's much better. I'm making minor mistakes. Paste that in there. Right. Save and let's run it one more time. It's coming up now. Select Sally's details. Click delete. Yes, we can delete. There we go. Sally's details is gone. But it's still here. We need we will be taking care of that. If I exit out, yeah, and rerun it. Sally's details will be gone by now. There we go. Look at that. Alright, that is good. Or we can also call. I think I can call the viewer in here. Let's call viewer in there. The function viewer that will refresh the whole lot for me. Grab hold of it. Copy that. Go into update right underneath here. I'm going to paste the viewer there. And I'm going to. Let's do one thing. I want this one to close before the message box here. Alright, let's call the viewer again. Come in here where we have delete. Where's viewer? Yeah, paste that in here. Yeah, and what else? Inside save. When we save, let's paste it right here as well. Underneath here. Close before the message. Right. Save that. So that is good. So I'm going to run it one more time. Run before we complete the rest lines of codes. Enter some values in here. And the name. Let's call that Tony Montana. Address number 17, Little Venice. Oh, that's email. Cut that off. Paste that in here. Email. Tony. At Gmail. Mobile number. Add that to the system. Yeah. You see that now? It automatically appears because I called the viewer. So let's assume we delete to the Montana's details now. There we go. You see the viewer automatically updated the data review. So that's taken care of as well. So we have one, two, three, four, five working. Now look at this one. All I just need to do is to call the viewer in there. So let's go back in there. Uh, double click on that. Just call Mr. Viewer. There we go. View the function viewer if you just can still recall. So that is taken care of. Now finally let's take care of the search function. Double click on the search button. Okay with the search first of all I'm going to let's go into view viewer the function viewer here. Look at it. We can just copy it anyway, so I'm going to copy everything we have inside Function Viewer. I could have called it, but I'm also going to add some data in there, so let's copy it all. Now go straight into my button again, the, the search function, just paste that right in here. Okay, now that that is done, so what we now want to do is, you see where we have select from? My database here so I'm going to now enter where employee ID where that is equals to the following okay and that is going to be the very first one would be the that would be the txt now there should be a plus sign plus txt the search and right here let's use another another details in there I'm going to say or let's use first name first name that should be all Oh, first name. Let's press enter. Go to another line. Oh, first name. And the first name, we're going to need a text 
properties there as well so we say coming, coming right here let's enter that and we say plus txt first name no we're using the search function again the search yeah dot text okay because I'm using the text I'm using the search text box close that and one other name that I can search for will be let's say or surname and that will be equals txt again that very same search function paste that in here dot text and let's just close it all up there we go okay now let's use the the checks that I have up there to check how many to check how many times uh, the system has searched okay so if this if the data you searching for is not on the system this will check it out for us so let's say checks I believe I call it checks that to be equals let's say convert dot to int 32 and what are we checking we're checking the data that that we have inside dt dot rows dot count and dot to string dot to string there we go now where is this going to be displayed it's going to be displayed inside my data review dot data source and that will be equals dt the source is from dt okay so we can close that and now let me just do one thing underneath here before i close up i'm going to use an if statement if checks equals equals zero we want the following so i want the txt search dot text that will be equals that and message box let's grab a message box here that's it's not found so grab all of that and come right in here paste that here underneath let me paste it underneath and i'm just i'm just going to say data not found R or record not found close that and that is it okay so that is done so I'm gonna save that okay let's let me sh see the codes again for that and make sure I don't have any error all right it looks it looks fine so I'm gonna run it now run there so let me just enter some more data in there so let's say the name is John John Johnson and email just a jj at gmail.com and here address Goodman Road Mobile number And let's add that Yeah Okay, that's fine We've added that So I'm now going to Let's assume we want to search for one of these guys here So let's see if that's going to work So I'm going to go for 
zero zero seven so sesh there we go look at that it's working seven six five zero zero seven works okay let's search for this guy now just copy that and paste that in here search there we go John details is there that's brilliant okay now I'm gonna do one thing see I don't like the way this looks like you see if I run it and you see the data is not filling up here so let's take care of that I'm gonna go straight into form load double click on form load okay right here inside my form load I'm going to let's just say data review one dot column and that is going to start from zero dot width I'm going to make that equals 112 yeah okay now copy that let's repeat that same for the others we have two three four five and six so I'm going to change this one to one two three four five no four five Okay, I want the the data grid view to be filled up. So let's see now. Let's run it and see. There we go. Look at that. So that's what I want. I like that. So let's enter more data here. Then we then create that of print. So and the name is going to be. Let's get my friend back online, Tony Montana. An email of. Montana is there we go address 17 Little Venice there add Montana's details enter new record and the name is let's say Peter Peter Jones email of Peter dot com and address number ninety echo ewu eight and mobile number there we go enter its details there there so all that is left for us now to do is to take care of the print but unfortunately I did not add the button here so I'm gonna have to do that because my buddy out there would like to know how to print so Let's exit out, come right down here and just create a button for print. Very quick one. So I'm going to have to reduce all of these buttons again one more time. Remove this one here and just reduce the buttons so that we can get print in. Okay guys, we have managed to squeeze in the print button and the next thing I want to do now is I'm going to select this print preview and let's go to the properties of print preview. You see right here, document. We want to change the document to print document. There we go. Now, the next thing is let's double click on this button. There we go. And the following lines of codes for the print button. So we'll have a good look at it. And finally, this object in here double click on that and we now get to use our bitmap variable that was declared up there so let's say e dot graphic dot draw image and the image I want it to be 
the object bitmap created up there comma um, enter the following coordinates there we go that is it done and that's all there is to that I'm going to save that run our project and let's see how that works right so if we click on print there we go guys look at that we can now print out the details of the employee so with that guys I want to call it the end of this tutorial it's been a very long one and a good one too kings learn email of king is this says gmail an address always lean there at that yeah so with that guys I'm gonna call it the end of this beautiful tutorial I suppose you guys enjoy it and please do subscribe to my channel and you can also join to become a member of this channel and thanks for watching. You all have a nice day now. And bye for now.